Welcome to the Carefree Black Nerd Podcast, a conversation about representation in comics and related media. I am your host, Rain Coleman, and again, we're diving into Carol Danvers. This is part two of the Guide to Carol Danvers. When you're listening to this episode and when you're getting ready to watch Captain Marvel, tweet me. Carefree Blurred, use that hashtag CBNPod. Let me know you're out there. Let me know you're listening. Now, uh, like I said, we're diving into part two of this Carol Danvers discussion, and I'll take a couple steps back just to reiterate what kind of mess this woman has been through, and this is in the 80s, 70s and 80s, I believe, but prior to that, when she was a young girl, Carol wanted to become an astronaut, she wanted to explore space, that was like her main motivation. Now, these motivations were quickly... Uh, I don't know, crushed by her piece of work dad, I'll say that much. And as a slap in the face, he sends her brother Steve, her younger brother, to college instead of her. Now, despite all this, Carol still graduated from high school at the top of her class, valedictorian, of course. And she uh, enlisted in the U.S. Air Force once she turned 18. She rose through the ranks and became one of the Air Force's top pilots. But of course she did. Now, during this mission in Afghanistan, her plane was shot down by Ghazi Rashid. Rashid, excuse me. Carol suffered a broken leg in the crash, and she was captured and tortured by Rashid and his men. Now, amazingly, Carol not only managed to escape, but she killed most of her captors during her escape. Like, it's just like people keep putting shit on top of her, and she keeps knocking it out the park. Now, the Air Force Special Operations Officer, Michael Rossi, he debriefed Carol. He was very impressed, uh, so impressed, in fact, that he recruited her into the Special Ops and began training her as a spy. So, if you're keeping a running tally, she was valedictorian. She was top, top of her class, top flight pilot, security of the world, Craig, and now she's a Special Ops spy. This is all separate from her even getting any of her powers. Just like, Wow. Now, um, now as Carol going on this new path, Michael became her mentor and, of course, her lover. And, I mean, I guess comics are soap operas at their core. So, you know, a little love story never hurt nobody. But, uh, was it necessary? I don't know. You be the judge. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> now, uh, after he became her lover, she also crossed paths with none other than Nick Fury, which, of course, now I'm excited to see the film. I'm just excited to see if any of this history will be folded into the MCU or if it'll be a clean, fresh take on Nick Fury and Carol Danvers. But I digress. <laughs> now, she also crossed paths with Logan. We all know him as Wolverine and Benjamin Grimm of the Fantastic Four. Now, eventually, Carol left that spy world behind her. She was tired of that. She went to Aru, um, to, Aru <laughs> to pursue her original passion at NASA. She became the head of security at the Kennedy Space Center where she met Dr. Walter Lawson. Man, this was a man who was secretly none other than the Kree spy known as Marvell. <laughs> oh, man. Now, Marvell, speaking of this guy. Marvel or Captain Marvel is a fictional hero, of course, in Marvel Comics. Um, he was created by Stan Lee and designed, designed, excuse me, by Gene Colan. He first appeared in Marvel Superheroes number twelve. That was back in December of nineteen sixty-seven. Now he debuted during the Silver Age of comic books and made many appearances since then. Now, specifically, getting down to uh, Marvel, a little bit of his backstory, rather. Um, this is back in the 60s. After the Kree's first encounter with humans, Captain Marvel is sent to spy on Earth and decide if it is a threat to the Kree Empire. He adopts the identity of a recently deceased scientist named Walter Lawson. Um, occasionally, he had his Kree military uniform to protect the people he was observing. And the first time he does this, people hear him incorrectly, and they pronounce him as Captain Marvel. 
His job is made difficult by a jealous commanding officer, none other than Colonel Jan Rog. His growing affection for humanity and his fake identity's criminal past. Now, um, that's kind of enough on him because I do want to focus on Carol Danvers. Now, Marvell became very close to Carol and he developed a kinship for humanity, as I just said. <laughs> While acting to protect the Earth, he was soon called Captain Marvel, of course, and he was also recognized as a hero. Now, uh, as both the Kree and the Skrulls attempted to infiltrate NASA, Carol investigated Marvell's human identity. Now, before she was captured by his Kree rival, Jan Rog. In the battle between Marvell and Jan Rog, Carol was knocked into a Kree device called the Psyche Magnetron. Now, somehow this machine drastically altered her DNA, making her the half Kree, half human that we know her to be, and giving her some of those powers very similar to Marvell. Now, her career at NASA was devastated by the ongoing attacks and after being demoted well below her original position carol was like fuck this i'm not doing this <laughs> so what did she do she wrote a tell-all book and this was about her experiences uh being rising through the ranks and the things that she encountered while she was working at nasa mm -hmm. now it quickly became a best seller and opened the door for a new career in writing however lord Carol's life was complicated by the Psyche Magnetron's changes to her mind and body. Because of this, one of the side effects was she developed a split personality. Now, the personality that was split went into action and she became Miss Marvel. She had a costume that re resembled Marvel's outfit. Now, Carol, however, had no memory of any of the activities that Miss Marvel uh, was was had going on. <laughs> was had going on. <laughs> now. Since she had no memory, she would have these blackouts, these huge chunks of time that was missing. Now, over the next few months, though, Carl, Carl, Carol <laughs> became aware of her alter ego, but these two personalities still, they remained separate from one another. Now, this changed in the aftermath of a Kree attack with a mind-altering device which backfired and united Carol's two personas. So it's like, man, she's been through all this and then had this split kind of psyche personality thing and then was merged back together and now you have to deal with the actions and the thoughts of these two separate entities that became one once again. Man, it was, she's been through a lot, y'all. Now, truly a new woman, Carol embraced her role as Miss Marvel and rapidly became a very prominent heroine. Whew, so, she finally, y'all, she, she getting some good stuff coming on in her life. She getting stuff together. You know, we ain't got a lot of drama outside of the, 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 the split personalities and such. Now, Carol, due to her great work as a heroine, was even invited to join the Avengers, which, of course, she accepted. Like, how in the hell wouldn't she? Now, we're moving into some darker territories here. Um, to do that, I just want to touch on, uh, we talked about Marvel uh, really quickly, Rogue. For those of you who don't know, Rogue is a mutant character. She's the adopted daughter of Mystique, another mutant, um, a villain. And she started off um, as a villain, of course, under Mystique, had this ability to siphon off the energy and powers from anyone she touched, skin to skin and ultimately became an X-Men. That's enough to kind of get you through this next couple parts of Carol's backstory. Now, Carol proved to be a formidable addition to the Avengers, and she developed friendships with many of the teammates like Wonder Man and Scarlet Witch, which again, comics are a soap opera. Anyone who knows Scarlet Witch, Wonder Man, Vision, this odd sort of love triangle, Ha, ah, but this isn't an episode about them, so <laughs> staying on task. Now, the mutant criminal Mystique, um, who, of course, Rogue's um, adopted mother, she's a shapeshifter, changeling-type character, blue skin, red hair, white dress and boots. <laughs> now, Mystique became one of Carol's personal villains, adversaries, uh, antagonists. This is what happened after Mystique murdered one of Carol's closest friends, Michael Barnett. Now, Carol's life took a turn for the worse when she was kidnapped and abducted to Limbo. Oh, man, Limbo. 
comics sure do love having their like versions of heaven and hell and different demons and representations of God and the devil and so forth. But Jesus, Limbo is a very odd place. I'm very interested to see if there's anyone who knows kind of the different levels of Limbo, Limbo's chronological history, um, I guess the history as it pertains to magic, Ileana Rasputin. If you know any history about Limbo, hit me up in the comments and let me know. Now, she was sent to Limbo and... <laughs> Oh, God. This is where shit gets really bad for Carol and, I mean, publication-wise and in, in story. Carol's captor was a man named Marcus, who claimed to be the son of Immortus. He's an enemy of the Avengers. Marcus brainwashed Carol into loving him and then returned her to Earth, where she would, get this, give birth to a new physical body for Marcus himself. What the like, okay, and that's not even, I want to say that's not the worst of it all, but that's not even it. Now, after she was kidnapped and taken to the alternate dimension and then brainwashed and seduced and impregnated, she gives birth to the man who did all this shit to her. Now, he was able to kind of remain on Earth until Hawkeye damaged his machine, him being uh, Marcus. After Hawkeye did this, Marcus takes Miss Marvel back to the Ultimate Dimension with no opposition from the Avengers. So this is y'all friend. This is y'all co-worker. This is your partner. This is your teammate. And this man who she was, for all intents and purposes, raped by and given birth to, y'all just let her go with him? Man, that is, that is messed up. Now, <laughs> since they... I don't know. The, the the excuse was that it seemed that she had fallen in love with him. But, oh, man, I'm so glad. We've, we've come leaps and bounds from this mess. Now, according to comic book historian Carol A. Strickland, uh, they criticized the storyline, understandably so. And um, she did this in an essay titled The Rape of Miss Marvel. She cited Marcus's line, <clears throat> Finally. After relative weeks of such efforts, and admittedly with a subtle boost from Immortus machines, you became mine. This man stalked her, kidnapped her, impregnated her, had her give birth to him, and then took her. It was, ah, it was so odd. Now, um, Strickland positioned that this was pretty much rape. And as a former writer of the solo title, Chris Claremont also commented on how inappropriate that storyline was. Uh, yeah, you think, man, like, again, for all the stuff that she's had piled on her back since she was created, this is one of the more horrible things, man. So once back with the Avengers, Carol had no memory of what had happened in Limbo, and she was understandably alarmed, to say the least, by her sudden pe pregnancy and delivery. Marcus grew to adulthood within a matter of days and explained who he was and what had happened. After that, and the truth was revealed, um, and she went back to limbo, Marcus essentially grew old and died. Well, Carol didn't, you know, and then she found a way back to Earth. Whew, man. Carol had re, re, um, excuse me, resumed her role as Miss Marvel, and this was back in San Francisco. Now, when she was attacked by Rogue, again, remember Rogue, that is Mystique's adopted daughter and a member of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Now, Rogue's assault was so vicious, but Rogue didn't even have kind of the foresight to know what would happen. Because at this point, I believe it was just a minor touch by Rogue, skin to skin, take your powers, your energy, and you faint. The fight with Miss Marvel was so intense that Rogue, of course, siphoned off the majority of her powers. Strength, flight, invulnerability, all of that. Now... Rogue's power spiraled out of control and she permanently stole those memories and power. So that's, I think, was very important. Uh, that's something that I do like about the Rogue kind of history is that not only am I gaining your powers and abilities as this good thing for me, but I also take on your memory and some of your personality traits and things that are kind of the side effect of this power. So yeah, I can siphon this from you, but at what cost? Now... <laughs> <laughs> this after Rogue stole all this stuff from Carol, her memories and powers, 
in a kind of a haze, Rogue attempted to murder Carol, but her life was saved by Spider-Woman Jessica Drew. Now, thanks to the efforts of X-Men's Charles Xavier, Professor Charles Xavier, Carol emerged from her coma with some of her memories, but not the emotional bonds that came with them, which again is another slap in the face, so you get your memory back, but you don't get your emotion. So now the people you love, you know who they are. Like, you know you're married to such and such. You know your mom is so-and-so. You know your best friend is whoever. But you don't have that emotional connection to the people. You just know the facts that things are who these people are. But you don't have the emotional weight behind them to back it up. Man, that is a terrible... T God, this woman has been through the ringer. <laughs> Man, so with all this, Carol became angry and cussed the hell out of the Avengers for not seeing Marcus, not seeing the lies and not and accepting this love, quote unquote, that she had for him. Like, what the hell is wrong with y'all? You need to do better. Now with with her powers being gone, Carol remained with the X-Men for some time and she uh kind of briefly encountered Rogue during a mission to erase the government files on the Xavier's team. Now, when the X-Men were captured by the alien Brood, Carol was experimented on due to her unique genetic structure. And that's another thing. You are now half Cree, half human, and you don't have your powers. You don't have your emotions. Like, And I wonder if, though her powers were taken away, was she now down to a baseline human? And then, you know, come to think of it, with Rogue siphoning off her powers... Her Cree human hybrid powers is Rogue technically Cree herself? Um, that's interesting. Or is it like a person, you know, dressing up and appropriating a culture where you're just wearing these trappings of this culture, but you don't take off? I wonder how that is. I'd be interested to see to have some type of discussion about that. So if you, if I'm shooting shots in the dark, <laughs> let me know in the comments. Or if you think that there is something to that idea that maybe Rogue is partly Cree or not. Or if you, you know the answer definitively, hit me up in the comments and let me know. Now, oh man. So now that uh, we go through to erase Xavier's files from the government, just in general, the government... When the X-Men were captured by Brood, Carol was experimented on, of course. Now, somehow, they connected Carol to a white hole. And then she emerged more powerful than ever before, now calling herself Binary, which was one of her other code names. Now, Carol used this newfound energy and abilities to help the X-Men defeat their mutual enemies. Now, but once she'd returned back on Earth, Carol was like, look. Fuck the shit. No, she didn't say that. No, but she was hit with the news that Marvell had died from cancer, which was like, ah, you were my, you know, you was a friend of mine. <laughs> Soon after, Carol felt betrayed when Xavier allowed Rogue to join the X-Men to help her deal with her overwhelming memories and persona she had absorbed from Carol. So I'm with her, like... This woman comes in, takes my powers, take the essence of me, take all my emotion away. And yes, she's the troubled soul and you're here to help her and mutants like her. But I'm in the same space and you take on this woman who has stole everything from me. And you agree to treat her as if I'm like, I, I felt that Xavier's probably between the rock and the hard place. You know, because you have your good friend on one hand and you have this trouble mutant on the other. But you can't tell me that out of all your years of living and all the mutants who have come and gone through the Xavier Institute, there's no way that you could have found some way to make this work. Uh, and then, of course, it's understandable that Carol would be upset. Like, this woman stole the essence of me and you just rocking with her like it's okay. Man... Ooh. Now, deciding to leave Earth behind, Carol joined the Star Jammers in space as they attempted to reinstall Lalandra Narasami, not sure if I said that correctly, as the leader of the Shi'ar. Carol remained with the Star Jammers even after Lalandra was restored as Empress, but she was also drawn to the Kree Shi'ar War and the Avengers Operation Galactic Storm. Carol used her binary powers to save Earth's son from a Kree plot and nearly burned herself out in the process. 
She remained on Earth to recuperate, and she even briefly regained her lost memories and emotions during an encounter with the stranger. So again, cool. She's you know she just working out. They getting a little better for, her, and I'm excited. I'm actually gonna wrap up right here because um, I, I think this is a pretty decent place to stop. But join me here next time, same nerd time, same nerd channel for the third installment of the Guide to Carol Danvers. Um, subscribe, uh, rate, review, comment, all that good stuff. Check out the podcast on SoundCloud. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, wherever you consume your podcast media. And if you're new, just dive in. Let me know what you think. I'd love to make this a conversation. Tweet me. That's the most immediate way to get in touch with me is to comment in the comments and to tweet me. Carefree Blurred. Um, use the hashtag CBNPod if you so choose. And until next time, stay carefree, stay nerdy, stay geeky, and we out. <laughs>